Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, so my topic today will be about an invasive surgery for cancer of the esophagus, what I will call MIO during all the presentation. So the rationale for an invasive esophagectomy is that esophagectomy is associated usually with a significant risk of morbidity and mortality in the prostopathic setting. The purported advantage of the mini invasive approach would be a reduced blood loss, reduced morbidity, reduced morbidity regarding complication, uh, pulmonary complication, less pain, shorter hospital stay, and earlier functional recovery. Here are presented all the techniques uh, usually used for a mini-invasive approach. You can have on the both sides of the slide the thoracoscopic uh, approach, meaning mini-invasive approach for the thorax. You can have also on the right the mini-invasive approach for the abdomen, meaning laparoscopic gastric mobilization. And you can have some different combination of mini-invasive versus open for one part or the other part. Reason why I showed you here all the mini invasive approaches that are usually used in the literature with thoracoscopic approach or without a thoracoscopic approach. Uh, in pink, you have the totally mini invasive approach. In blue, you have the hybrid approach, all those being mini invasive techniques. So, with thoracoscopic approach, you can have both a thoracoscopic and a laparoscopic esophagectomy with a cervical anastomosis that will be called mini invasive esophagectomy a thoracoscopic and laparoscopic esophagectomy, but with an intrathoracic anastomosis, not in the neck, but in the thorax, that is called also a mini-invasive approach and the high volume procedure. You can have a thoracoscopic esophageal mobilization of the esophagus, but with an open laparotomy and cervical anastomosis, that will be an hybrid. And you have some technique without thoracoscopic approach, you have the famous high volevis uh, with uh, laparoscopic gastric mobilization with an open thoracotomy and uh, the abdominal part done under laparoscopic uh, uh, approach that is called an hybrid. And finally, you can uh, um, have a total laparoscopic transiatal esophagectomy without any thoracoscopic or thoracotomy that is called also some uh, degree of mini invasive. So all those in pink will be uh, totally mini invasive and in blue hybrid mini invasive. So what are the uh, data published today? We have mostly single institution case series with few studies reported on comparison between historical and matched cohort. Uh, as you understood, there are uh, various surgical techniques that have been used and many differences between Eastern and Western countries, specifically according to the learning uh, curve uh, uh, based on uh, the difficulties of such a very uh, uh, skillful, skillful uh, technique. However, we have one single harm phase two study and two randomized now phase three study, and I will highlight on this. Just to highlight the fact that we have one meta-analysis, it's not really meta-analysis because based on retrospective study uh, uh, included, one looking at totally mini invasive esophagectomy compared to open, just to highlight the fact there's some uh, significant difference between groups. Uh, with caution between being the fact that all those studies were retrospective again, showing a significant benefit regarding blood loss, lack of hospital stay, respiratory complication, and total morbidities that are in favor of the total mini invasive approach. In this meta analysis, the same has been uh, obtained uh, with hybrid approach with less blood loss and astomotic leak or respiratory complication. No significant difference, but a large trend toward lower postoperative morbidity, and this is explained in this paper by the fact that the study dedicated to hybrid approach are uh, much smaller uh, uh, with a lower number of studies published when compared to totally mini invasive approach. So going through uh, uh, phase two and phase three trial, we have one phase two single harm trial published in the very experienced team of uh, Lukatic in Pittsburgh, USA, with the primary aim of looking, of looking the feasibility of the immunity approach in a multi-institutional setting. It's a prospective comparative study, including 17 centers, 100 patients and four uh, operated on. The convention rate was acceptable of 8.7% and the technique used a uh, uh, totally mini-invasive pro approach with high, higher cervical anastomosis uh, at the uh, early part of the experience, uh, uh, whereas in the second part of the experience, a famous Harvard-Levis procedure with an intrathoracic anastomosis. 
the primary endpoint was 30-day mortality, and secondary endpoint were uh, morbidity, adverse events, length of hospitalized days, and long-term outcomes. Sorry. <clears throat> So here I presented the main results, quite simple, just to say that the uh, complete air zero resection rate was high, more than 96%. That is quite good in such a, a surgical approach. Um, there's no difference um, uh, uh, when compared to historical controls uh, regarding the number of lymph node retrieves that is quite high. Um, even if those patients received uh, mostly uh, neoadjuvant treatments such as chemo radiation. Uh, the postoperative mortality was acceptable of 2.9%, and uh, um, as, uh, as expected, we have some uh, uh, adverse events that are specifically uh, uh, medical complications. And what is of importance, because it's the first time we have some data on long term outcomes, the surgery survival, three year, surgery, three year of, sorry, overall survival was 68% with a very low occurrence rate. And you may know that now, in surgical, expert surgical team, the um, local regional recurrence rate should be less than 7 or 5%. Coming, going now through a randomized phase three trial, we have three, uh, two, sorry, phase three trial, one published in The Lancet in 2012, uh, based on 100 and a little bit, 100, uh, 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 on a little bit more, 100 patient enrolled, uh, looking at the mean total immunity approach when compared to the open approach. Uh, please note that the technique was not strictly the same between the two approaches because the mean invasive was done by thoracoscopy and laparoscopy and cervical incision in order to avoid the difficult technique of performing an intrathoracic anastomosis through thoracoscopy. And the open arm was a standard avolavis procedure with an intrathoracic anastomosis. And you all know that the anastomotic site may be a strong predictor of postoperative complications. So primary endpoint was respiratory complication at two weeks, and secondary endpoint uh, was postoperative morbidity, operative data, and oncological outcomes. So here are presented the first part of the results. Uh, the conventional rate was quite high because of 14% of convention to open approach in the mini invasive group. Regarding anastomotic leakage, no strict difference, but a trend to more anastomotic leakage, and we will see in the next months in the literature that definitely the thoracoscopic uh, uh, approach with a neutrothoracic anastomosis significantly increased the risk of postoperative leakage. And uh, uh, quite difficult to explain here, a high rate of uh, vocal cord pulses uh, in the open approach that is very high and quite understandable because normally we have a risk of higher uh, um, uh, paralysis of the vocal cord when patients benefit from the cervical anastomosis. That was the case here in the mini-invasive group and you see that the rate here is 2% in the mini-invasive group uh, whereas patients receive cervical anastomosis compared to 14% in the open group where our patient received only intrathoracic anastomosis. So difficult to understand. So regarding the primary outcome, a strong and significant and probably medically, medically relevant differences uh, between the two arms regarding both the pulmonary infection at two weeks and the uh, pulmonary infection in hospitals that was significantly lower in the mean invasive group when compared to the open group. Um, regarding other outcomes, uh, no difference regarding L0 resection rate, even if the majority of the patient, as you can see here, had small tumors, stage one or stage two, uh, a very uh, small number of stage three that are usually the population of an esophageal cancer. And regarding postoperative mortality, no difference between the group, but please note 0% in the open group and 2% in the mean invasive group. For sure, it's not statistically significant, but it could be questioned regarding the medical relevance. I will detail a little bit more after. So the reason why our team made some comments in the Lancet regarding this publication, because for sure we have some positive results validating, seems to validate a uh, uh, mine invasive approach by thoracoscopic and laparoscopic approach. However, we think that there's definitely some um, um, limitation to be highlighted. The first one is that many non-studied variables may affect the primary endpoint, such as malnutrition, smoking habits, pulmonary comorbidity, or performance status that are not reported in the paper. Um, there's a difference between the two groups regarding ventilation. 
one group received the one lung ventilation, the open group. The mean invasive group did not receive one lung ventilation, but two lungs ventilation. And you have a New England uh, paper, a randomized trial, showing that definitely the one of the most important factors for explaining pulmonary complication after esophagectomy and high magnitude surgical, uh, uh, min high magnitude surg uh, surgery uh, is definitely the way of ventilation, meaning that one lung ventilation may be a strong uh, confounders for explaining the higher rate of postoperative pulmonary complication in the mini invasive group. There is no longitudinal assessment of the quality of life. There is no multivariable analysis to test independently of those, all those variables the impact of mini invasive esophagectomy on morbidity. And you see that the pneumonia rate was high in the open group, probably higher than usually expected, 34%. It's uh, around 20 to 25% in other uh, published series uh, in high expert uh, uh, teams, and probably maybe related to high, risk, high rates of high cord, uh, vocal cord paralysis rates that was, again, higher in the open group for unexplainable reasons. And finally, because the two uh, techniques were used, laparoscopic and thoracoscopic. We don't have any data to look to understand what is the impact of the laparoscopic approach over the thoracoscopic approach. So what could be the benefit of the laparoscopic gastric mobilization over the thoracoscopic approach? Um, we have uh, many teams have published their results of laparoscopic gastric mobilization with open thoracic approach, showing promising results with decreased postoperative morbidity, surgical trauma through less deterioration of the ventilatory mechanism, and it has been demonstrated to be beneficial in reflux surgery and cholestectomy with decreasing postoperative morbidity after such mini invasive approach. That's the reason why we, pub we have published our experience on mean invasive laparoscopic gastric mobilization on open thoracotomy, what is called hybrid, uh, uh, in the BGS in 2012, and then proceed with a randomized trial, that is this one, the MIRO trial, that is under publication, comparing the high volevus procedure either by open or mean invasive approach, meaning laparoscopic gastric mobilization versus open abdominal approach. All those patients received an open thoracotomy. Primary endpoint, overall morbidity at 30 days. Secondary endpoint, morbidity, mortality, pulmonary uh, uh, complications, oncological outcomes, and medical economic analysis. So the randomization was done at time of uh, uh, surgery after a laparoscopic examination of the peritoneal cavity. First arm, laparoscopic approach plus open thoracotomy. Second arm, open approach for the abdomen and open thoracotomy. Inclusion criteria was quite standard. Where patients were non-selected, whatever could be the TNM stage of or uh, receiving a new adjuvant treatment or not. Uh, what is of importance is in this trial is that we implemented many quality controls uh, with regarding the operative techniques with uh, all centers receiving a video and a surgical education before beginning, uh, including patients uh, in the trial. There's a super surgical supervision by the PI of the trial for all um, uh, centers and only trained centers were enrolled. Some recommendations were done regarding the preoperative care with ERAS guidelines to be applied. Definition of complication was standardized. There is a blind evaluation of the presence and severity of complication. And then in the second step, a blind evaluation of the severity that was reviewed by the independent medical committee. And 100% of data and 100% of patients had the data monitoring. So just to go through the... Uh, 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 results of this study, you have 130, 103 patients randomized in the hybrid mini invasive approach and 104 in the open approach. Uh, here I presented the results of the uh, uh, characteristics of the, in the two arms, no significant difference, uh, um, just highlight the fact that the most, vast majority of patients had uh, um, adenocarcinomas uh, and are received the neoadjuvant treatment in more than 75% of cases based on neoadjuvant chemoradiation. <clears throat> no difference regarding the median operative time. It's of importance because it is the first time that we have such results, probably because we have trained centers before, so there's no learning curve included. And the uh, recoversion rate was very low, 2.9%, highlighting the feasibility of this technique worldwide. Regarding pathological analysis, high rate of L0 resection, no difference 
uh, regarding the TPT and PNA stage, and the number of removed lymph nodes was very high, more than 20 lymph nodes, despite the fact that patients receive neurodegenerative tumor radiation. Regarding the primary endpoint of the study that has been already uh, showed in, uh, at the ASCO meeting two years ago, the, uh, the, the rate of complication was significantly lower in the hybrid meaning of approach with the odd ratio of 0.31, uh, meaning 69% reduction of severe morbidity after the laparoscopic gastric mobilization with no impact of the centers that perform the technique. Uh, regarding uh, specific details regarding postoperative complication, uh, the uh, major benefit was uh, observed for major pulmonary complications that were significantly lower in the hybrid group when compared to the open group without significant difference between the other complications, specifically surgical complications. Regarding postoperative mortality, no difference, but again, uh, uh, twofold higher in the open group when uh, compared to the hybrid group. Um, regarding overall survival, because we wait for three years for uh, uh, all the patients in order to have a median follow-up of 49 months, and you can see there is a strong trend uh, with a significant survival benefit uh, in the hybrid group and compared to the open group, 67% versus 55% uh, respectively. The same was observed with DFS, that was again a secondary aim of this study. So we conclude from this trial that the reduction hybrid meniz approach would allow a reduction of severe complication, specifically a major pulmonary complication without negative impact on clinical outcomes. We think based on that, that hybrid meniz approach should be considered as a new standard worldwide for the surgical uh, approach of the fragile cancer. Uh, because of the trend of uh, lower postoperative mortality, in another study that was a national-based study, we look at the impact of laparoscopic gastric mobilization on postoperative mortality, and after a proposed system matching to control for biases, and when after our enrolling uh, more than 3,000 patients uh, in France, we definitely found that again laparoscopic mobilization. Uh, uh, with hybrid meaning approach, decrease risk of 30-day postoperative mortality and 90-day postoperative mortality with an hazard ra odd ratio of 0 0.6. There's another randomized trial that is ongoing in UK, but we don't have any result for the moment comparing the hybrid, the open, and the total immunity approach. And uh, just to uh, uh, conclude, before taking messages, we have some unanswered questions. Uh, we have recent meta-analysis based on retrospective small case series of very different operations that uh, show some contradictory uh, benefits and that needs to be interpreted with caution. We have two randomized trials favoring uh, the mini invasive approach. One published in The Lancet um, uh, exhibited that totally mini invasive approach offers some benefits combining laparoscopy and thoracoscopy, but in very experienced hands, with an increased complexity brings, bringing a higher uh, potential for error, uh, needing for a modification of the surgical technique with, uh, for in most uh, patients, the need for adding a cervical anastomosis that could provide some specific morbidity. It's time demanding. Oncological safety is not demonstrated at present time for total immunity approach. What about reproducibility and wholly probably for selected tumor patients and teams? Regarding the hybrid approach, that was uh, the uh, uh, technique used in the MIRO trial with laparoscopic gastric mobilization and upper thoracotomy, it offers also some benefits. It's probably easy with a little learning curve, reproducible without modifying the surgical technique complexity. It could be done whatever could be the tumor on patient characteristic, whatever could be the center experience, and do not compromise carcinological resection, allowing extended resection and allowing salvage zephagectomy. And it's probably because you know that the hospital volume matters and the, surgical, uh, the surgeon volume matters, that it's very likely to be transferable to MIO, reason why we think that hybrid approach should be probably the first step. So take up messages, Mr. Angertainman, Mr. Chairman. Uh, many, many invasive approach is feasible. We have two randomized trials showing that MIO allows a decreased risk of postoperative morbidity, and specifically pulmonary complication. Both hybrid and totally mini-invasive vasectomy offer a similar magnitude of benefit on morbidity with respectively odd ratio of 0.31 and 0.30. 
positive impact on postoperative mortality only for hybrid approach. Long-term logical safety is only demonstrated for hybrid approach. So the comparison between mean invasive, uh, uh, totally mean invasive, which is hybrid, is of high scientific interest, but you understood that the expected differences are small, meaning large numbers to be included because the odds the ratio was quite similar. Uh, the problem was also the learning curve, surgical challenge, robustibility, and randomization in surgical trials that, that is not always easy. More than my opinion is that more than putting the two uh, techniques in opposition, we may have them uh, uh, both to be used according to patient profile, tumor extension, center surgeon expertise, and patient desire. Uh, and this seems for me much appropriate. Finally, uh, I think that such hypotheses should be tested in real life, reason why we have now a national and that is now a worldwide uh, uh, prospective clinical biological database that is called FREGAT, uh, with 1,700 patients on roll and 20 more than 20,000 samples, biological tumoral samples included, allowing us to test again in real life such hypotheses. I would like to thank you for your attention.